If you're new to the channel, I'm Wayne. This is April. Hey, yo. We do a video every Thursday. Today, along with some of our travel vlogging friends, we are sharing with you some of the top destinations for travel in 2021, if things go back to normal, that is. Why do we love Mexico so much? That's way too much to try and fit into 90 seconds, but we do love a challenge. We're Howard and Caitlin New State, the New State Nomads, and we've been traveling full time around the world with you since 2018. Earlier this year during COVID-19, we quarantined for three months on an island in Mexico, but we can't wait to go back to continue exploring this wonderful country again soon. So why should you consider Mexico? Let's start the clock. Maybe we should break it down into categories. Food, people, culture, activity. Gotta start with the food. There's an incredible regional diversity in the cuisines of Mexico, reflected in the melting pot of indigenous and imported cultures. Mole, meats, seafood, spices, vegetables, and of course tacos are filled with every imaginable combination of the above. Each region plays to their strengths and the dishes are incredibly diverse. People often think of Tex-Mex, but the food of Mexico is so much more and for a lot less money than you might imagine. Next up, the people of Mexico are incredibly warm, welcoming, and genuinely excited to share their country with visitors. In our five months of travel in Mexico this year, we never ever felt unsafe. And to the contrary, locals would go out of their way to help us. And we're often patient with our mediocre Spanish. Speaking of Spanish, Google Translate will become your best friend, particularly outside the major cities and coastal areas. Now let's add the layer of culture, which is everywhere in Mexico. Everyone knows about the tallest pyramid in Egypt, but did you know that number two and three in the world are located near Mexico City and Cancun? Sometimes the layering is literal, like a Spanish church on top of a pyramid. Take time to explore the smaller cities and you'll be surprised at what you find from past millennia. Looking for world-class paragliding or millions of monarch butterflies? How about a nighttime tour of ancient pyramids to learn how people lived thousands of years ago? If you like the color teal, Mexico delivers with giant waterfalls, unbelievable hot spring pools built into the cliffs, and warm rivers perfect for soaking. Okay, we're almost out of time, but to learn about Mexico or any of our other travels, visit our YouTube channel or the New State Nomads website. We hope you'll continue on the journey with us. Aloha. We're Amy and Eric from the Nirn Way. We were basically traveling full time around the world until the pandemic sadly shut everything down. So we're coming to you from our new home in Honolulu, Hawaii, which is not bad. I mean, we made lemonade. It's pretty awesome here. When Wayne and April reached out and asked where was, you know, one country that we would love to revisit, we immediately both thought of Argentina. Starting with Buenos Aires, where it feels very European-like, and the food, oh my gosh, just off the charts. And then we worked our way all the way down to Patagonia, and then on the way back out, we went to Mendoza, which was just heaven on earth. I think we really loved it there. Yeah, there are so many things, and if you're an outdoors type person, you know, Iguazu Falls is this, like the world's largest waterfall. You know, a large part of Patagonia is actually inside of, of Argentina, so if you're into hiking or mountains or, you know, any of that stuff, glaciers, they pretty much, they pretty much have the it all. They have it all, yep. But also, the people they were so helpful, so kind, sweet, sweet, amazing people that we met. So, you know, I think that we would rush back if right. we could. All right, everybody, stay safe. Happy New Year. Mahalo. Hey, you guys. Thank you, Wayne and April, for allowing me to be in another video of yours. My name is Anthony Perez with A. Perez Voyages, and what can I say? 2020 has been nothing short of an interesting year. All of us travelers have been looking forward to one thing, and that's travel. If there's any place I would go back to, if not recommend to you to travel to once travel opens back up at place, is New Zealand. New Zealand is top of my list because it offers so much of what one would need to start fresh and travel once again. New Zealand is absolutely beautiful. It's got gorgeous beaches, gorgeous mountains, landscape, everything. The air is clean, the people are friendly, and my personal favorite, very strong and rich in Polynesian culture. Personally, I would go back to New Zealand because New Zealand is just the perfect place for that reset to get back to travel again. Keep your head up, Voyagers, because that time to travel will come. Hi, Wayne and April, it's Ryan here from the One Shot Adventures channel. 
For the last year or so, I've been traveling all over the amazing countries of Asia and Southeast Asia. But as we all know, we are now living in very strange times with borders closed and no real timeline for when they'll open again. But when things do open up, I can't think of many better destinations to get to than the Philippines. A country made up of over 7,000 islands with pristine sands and crystal clear water. The Philippines really is paradise. You have the island of Palawan with its boat trips to hidden lagoons and waterfalls. You have the island of Bohol with its surreal landscapes and real life baby odors. You have the surfing Mecca of Chargal, which is fast becoming the new Bali. And then there's Boracay with its luxury hotels and restaurants and incredible clear water. But for me, to see the real Philippines, you need to get off the beaten path to islands like Tablas and Romblon, which is a real adventure. But one thing you can count on wherever you go is the insane hospitality of the Filipino people. They'll welcome you wherever you go and it's the country's greatest attraction. So that's why I think you should pick the Philippines as your next destination. Thank you for watching and thank you for living life. Hey you guys, it's Matt from the Xenial Traveler channel and I love going on adventures in unusual places. So my recommendation for when you can next travel again safely is Bosnia and Herzegovina. If you've heard of Bosnia and Herzegovina, chances are it's because of the war in the 90s. <laughs> I'll be honest and say that when you first arrive in Bosnia, Chances are a lot of what you see is actually quite painful, quite shocking and exploring the country is a real eye-opener. Beyond the war and the sadness, Bosnia is a country rich in history and culture and unlike some of its small popular neighbours like Croatia for example, it's still very little visited by tourists. And that also means that it's incredibly affordable to travel in Bosnia. And there's also just lots of really good, really filling, tasty food for very cheap everywhere. What really surprised me though is just all of that beautiful natural landscapes, outdoor spaces ranging from mountains to primeval rainforests to waterfalls and rivers. This is nature at its finest, with really pristine, clear air and water so clean you could drink from the rivers. Mm. So, whenever you have the ability to travel again, I do urge you to consider unique destinations like Bosnia and Herzegovina, because I promise you that the experience will be unforgettable. Well <laughs> I'm Matt from the Xenil Traveller channel and I wish you health and happiness and also have yourselves some unusual adventures. Hi, I'm Maria and I'm Giorgio and we are Dreamy Dream Travel Story. Story! Thank you so much Wayne and April for inviting us to your channel. We love exploring this beautiful world and even if it's possible to travel again, we are heading back to our favourite country, Guatemala, Guatemala. <laughs> which is also the country where Giorgio was born. There are so many reasons why we love Guatemala. Guatemala offers gorgeous natural scenery. Here you find 37 volcanoes, a few of them are still active. One of our top places in Guatemala is Lake Atitlan, which was formed 84,000 years ago during an enormous volcanic eruption. This lake is the deepest lake in Central America and it's renowned as one of the most beautiful lakes in the world. We couldn't agree more. Its crystal blue water is surrounded by jungle-clad mountains, colorful Mayan villages, hiking trails and of course majestic volcanoes. Guatemala is such a colorful country with a rich and interesting culture and history. In some villages, the local Mayan people are still wearing traditional clothing and you have the chance to attend traditional ceremonies. Antigua is one of the most visited places in Guatemala. The city has been an UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1979. 
and it's famous for its colorful colonial buildings. On the Pacific coast of Guatemala, you find stunning volcano black sand beaches and the waves make it a paradise for surfers. The sun rises and the sunsets are simply gorgeous. If you get tired of the beach, just go exploring the mangrove forests. On the Caribbean coast of Guatemala, you find white sand beaches, palm trees, rivers and lush green nature to explore. In the town of Livingston, you have the chance to learn more about the Garifuna culture. Don't miss visiting the jungle of Petén in northern Guatemala. The wildlife is fascinating and you can explore impressive hidden caves. The food in Guatemala is both affordable and delicious. is trying their world famous coffee and chocolate when you're here. Yes, there are so many reasons why we love Guatemala. We can't wait to go back and explore and meet more of this country's warm and friendly people. Hi, I'm James. And I'm Laurent. And our channel is called James and Laurent. Yeah, we're very creative. <laughs> And our top destination for 2021 is Bora Bora. We've been to Bora Bora a couple of times, and the fact that we went back says a lot because we don't often go back to the same place twice. And what's even funnier is that we're not even big beach people. We normally prefer traveling to big cities where you can visit museums and monuments. Bora Bora is one of the most beautiful places we've ever seen. And it's so laid back, it's very relaxing. It has a lot of the activities that Hawaii has. Like swimming with the sharks and the manta rays. But with only 200,000 tourists a year instead of 10 million. I used to think Bora Bora was at the end of the world, but flights from LA or San Francisco to Tahiti take eight hours. Instead of five hours for Hawaii. So yes, it's further than Hawaii, but it's a lot more authentic too. I think it's the mix of French and Polynesian influence that makes Bora Bora so special. If you stay in one of those overwater bungalows, rooms can be pricey, but if you stay at a normal hotel, Bora Bora is not as expensive as you might think. And if you have the option to fly midweek, flights are a lot cheaper than on the weekend. So we hope you make Bora Bora part of your 2021 plans. And if you want to learn more about Bora Bora, check out our channel, where we have several videos about Bora Bora. It really is a little paradise. Hey guys, Janet here with Radiant Wanderings. My vote would be Italy. Our whole family loves Italy. We've gone multiple times and there's just so much to enjoy there from the food to the sights to just the culture. So I do have a few recommendations for your travel planning for Italy. Rome. We didn't like Rome. However, we realized in our travels that we really aren't typically fans of the really large cities. So if you are a city person, you love going to large cities, Disregard everything I'm saying about Rome and go there. Cortina, Italy, it is in the north of Italy. It's in the Dolomite mountain range. Great skiing and snowboarding in winter, hiking and biking through the mountains in summer. And the town is just absolutely picture perfect, adorable. We also love the Amalfi Coast. We went in April and I highly recommend that time frame. April, May, it's not as busy, but things are starting to open up. We stayed in Priano. We did not stay in Positano. We did take a boat tour from Priano to Capri and we toured Capri for the day. That boat tour company was La Sibila and they were great. And then of course Florence. Who doesn't love Florence? Florence is big enough to have so many historic sites for you to see, things to do, but it's still small enough. You can walk most places. And Cinque Terre. Cinque Terre is five villages. They have trains between them. You can also hike between the villages. Venice is one of our family favorites. If you go to Venice, we love staying in the Dorsodoro district. It has some of our favorite eateries and gelato shops. I would love to hear in the comments below where you're planning your next trip to, whether it's 2021 or further out. And if it's Italy, uh, message me. I want to come with you. Hey everyone, I am super excited to be part of this video. Wayne and April, thank you for having me here. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Yvonne and I have the YouTube channel Go Yvonne. And on that channel, I make videos about my life in China. I have been living, working and traveling in China for 10 years and I share all of that. Well, there are really three reasons why I think you should come to China. 
The first reason are the cities. The cities have a lot of history to offer. There's a lot of culture, but many of the cities are also very modern. So that is really a nice balance between old and new. The second reason why I think you should come here is because of the nature. China is a huge country, lots of parks with great nature. There are mountains, deserts, there are rainforests. China even has its own tropical island. And finally, the third reason is the food. The, the country is big, like I said, and each region has its own traditional uh, dishes. So there is always something else that you can try and eat. So those are the three main reasons why I think you should come to China. Again, thank you for having me in this video and I hope everybody can go out and travel again soon in the new year. This video, if things go back to normal in 2021, I'm gonna recommend one particular country you guys should definitely check out. And this country I recommend because it's in Central Asia and it's part of the historical Silk Road. But before I name that particular country, Quick introduction, my name's Joe. I have a travel channel that creates the more informed style of travel content through vlogs and basically travel advice type content. And also do stuff around London and some personal experimental content like 360 video, documentary style and educational content. Okay, my recommendation for 2021 is Uzbekistan. I'm a big fan of the history of the Silk Road. And back in 2016, I actually had an opportunity to travel from Kazakhstan overland it all the way back to the UK going through the Silk Road countries including Uzbekistan. It was just an incredible experience actually going to the places that I've been reading all these years along the Silk Road and the highlight was definitely Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan is great because it's full of these amazing historical sites like Samarkand and Registan. You literally look everywhere and it's just like culture and history oozing around all these like old palaces and mausoleums. And I think Uzbekistan is definitely going to get a lot more exposure because it got recommended by Lonely Planet as um, the number one destination of 2020. Uzbekistan is still one of those off the beaten track type places, but it's definitely gaining popularity and there's been a huge amount of investment into the country. So infrastructure and just connections will be a lot more easier. So try and get to Uzbekistan before it gets really, really crowded with tourists. Our top destination for you is Bulgaria. I know this is a country that you wouldn't have thought about traveling to, but we loved it. Let's talk about the world-class wine. Oh, the vineyard that we went to was number 39 in the world. Yes. These so are some amazing. of the most amazing wines you've ever had. If you're into wine, try some Bulgarian and wonderful wine. Wonderful people too. Historic cathedrals. Oh, absolutely. Dotted across the country. It's so old. The artwork will blow you away. Too. Oh, and the art architecture. Believe me, this is a different world. I highly suggest visiting Bulgaria. Yep, yep. Uh, Be sure to get lost on a hike. Well, maybe not lost, but get on a hike. The outdoor nature is way worth it. The cuisine is definitely an experience. Some of it is absolutely amazing and some of it's kind of weird. There were only a couple of things that we had a bit of a struggle with. Overall, we absolutely devoured everything, the especially the bread. And the drink, Wayne and the Rakia. Oh yeah, gotta try Rakia when you're there. <laughs> it's like uh, their homemade brandy or whiskey. I'm not sure which yeah, one. Yeah, it's like drinking kerosene. No, it's amazing. <laughs> Check out the ancient fortresses. You like the word ancient, don't you? I do. Well, everything's there is ancient. <laughs> it's old, it's historic. Oh, the Roman sites. You don't feel like the average tourist when you go there and your dollar goes really far. Oh yeah. Check out the card above for our Bulgarian series. I want to thank you guys for watching our video all the way to the end. If you would, hit that subscribe button, share it with a friend, and like always, thank you for, for living life. We'll see you next Thursday.